a woman of many talents and she's someone who uh, I've actually never gotten to meet in person, really connected through, uh, I think I reached out to her on LinkedIn, um, but we work in very, very similar fields. She does a lot of teaching, education around marketing. Um, and when we connected, she was like, oh my gosh, Alan, you, you help with videos and all these other things. And um, after initially meeting, we've really hit it off. Um, and she's someone who I look up to. She's got a lot of experience in business. She has a lot of wisdom and um, someone who I really am enriched after every single conversation. So if you if any of that resonated with you, you're going to absolutely love today's interview. Uh, so today's interview is powered by Triple Effect, where we create six months worth of video content for YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and TikTok, and film it all in a space of two days. Uh, if you're interested in finding out more about how it all works, how we script, film, edit, and also publish up to three videos weekly, go to tripleeffect.com.au. Otherwise, let's get started with the... Alrighty, so today on Behind the Lens, we are joined by the amazing Jane Anderson. So I'm really excited to chat to Jane. We've been internet friends. We've actually, we've never met in person, have we? We haven't. Nice. So <laughs> we've just... We I feel like we have, like it's, it's, it's really funny in that way, isn't it? But um, we've always been connected, you know, we've had a couple of conversations here and there, but I'm really excited to have you on today. Um, and obviously we'll introduce you in a second. Um, but for those who don't know about, actually, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to like stuff this up. I'd love for you to do, introduce yourself and, and what you do, if that's okay. Oh yeah, sure. Um, so hi everyone, thanks uh, so much for having me Alan, I feel very privileged to be on your podcast. Um, so I am a, essentially a strategic communications expert, I've spent the last 20 years helping people to build their brands and in particular over the last few years I specialise mostly people who have consulting practices who are selling B2B. Um, so my focus is helping them to become really exceptional at what they do. And my real obsession is helping people to get to sort of world class and wanting everything to be world class. So I've written a few books, spoken on a few stages, I've spoken to a few thousand people. Um, I'm a CSP certified speaking professional, won about 43, 45 awards. We're up to. But who's uh, counting? <laughs> uh, 45 awards in yep. um, branding, marketing, comms. Uh, all that sort of stuff. I say working with me is a little bit like, um, I say I'm a, a, a little bit like a can opener and that people got really good stuff inside them and I just got to try and um, get it out. So yeah. I work mostly with people who have consulting practices. I put in systems, marketing, sales, all that sort of stuff um, and help them to take their practice to where they get to have a lot of fun, uh, fulfillment and freedom which is the awesome. ultimate game right <laughs> absolutely absolutely and for those who who are listening um you know what i'll what i'll also suggest is i think we we did a little catch up so i think we we might have bumped into each other on linkedin maybe yeah I and i don't know was. if you found me or i found you or whatever the case was but we connected um you invited me on for an interview I had you on for an interview as well. Um, we've recently obviously launched this podcast and you were like very high on my list to reconnect with and, and check in. Um, but even after like we spoke, I then seemed like you were um, speaking at uh, the real estate conference, Eric, yes. the year that... Um, That's right. That Yeah, and it, it really helped me to solidify, oh, wow, like it, it was a real privilege. Like, I, you know, sometimes you just don't know who you're speaking to and connecting with and all those other things. But um, the more that I've been able to obviously follow your journey and, and really like get a really good understanding, even just in our passing conversations, there's a lot of wisdom that I like there's a lot of deep wisdom in, in the way that you talk and share and, and things like that. And it's one of the reasons why, you know, I'm really excited to have today's chat anyway. So thank you again for being on. Oh, you're very kind, Alan. I'll, I'll bring you a and do You can do my intros. <laughs> the podcast. It was great. <laughs> yeah. And also, just as a side note, uh, Jane also has an Aussie bulldog named Winston. And so I think on, a, on one of our last <laughs> interviews, um, my dog Frankie came in and we both knew, we both realized that we each um, have Aussie Bulldogs anyway. So <laughs> that's, that's all fun and exciting. That was fabulous. 
Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure Frank. I was gonna, I was going to go and get Frankie for this one, but he's he's in the lounge room snoring, <laughs> snoring his head off at the moment. I've been snoring his head off too. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's what they're good for, aren't they? It's anyway, right. so um, look, what I'd love to do is I'd love to start like because, like I said, I one of the reasons why I'm really keen to have you on and and wanted to chat is because the depth of the wisdom that you talk about and. You've obviously been in business for quite some time. You've learned a lot of lessons. You've seen, you know, the GFC, COVID, and and a number of different things in between um, in your business adventures, if you will. I'd love to understand, like, through, like, did you always know that you were going to be in business or even just give us a little bit of backstory as to how you got into business itself? Yeah, sure. Um so I knew I wanted to have a business since I was a kid. You know, like I just always, for some reason, I just always knew that that was what I would do. I think from probably 10 years old, I always knew that I always found, I had, um, my parents were not entrepreneurs at all, but I had family members around me, particularly I had one auntie who, an uncle who had a, had their own business. And I used to spend my school holidays and weekends and I just loved working with them. They had a beautiful furniture store. And so my real start was in retail and I just loved helping people. I loved, you know, helping them find ideas and solutions and talking to people. And so I've always probably really found it interesting. And even through school, um, I had a fantastic business studies teacher. I adored my business studies teacher. I just um, couldn't get enough of it. I found it really interesting, went on to study business and majored in marketing um, off the back of school. But um, very early in my, uh, I was 14 when I started working for um, a small business, which was the Mathers family, which was Sir Robert Mathers, who started Mathers Shoes years ago. Um, so Sir Robert was knighted by the Queen. So I worked for the family for 15 years and um, and have continued to, they've been a big part of my, um, my career really early on. And I learned some really valuable things about building a brand, reputation, um, trust, um, customer care, uh, all those sorts of things that have really stood me instead from there. So when, when I finished working for them, I went on to work for in um, state government. So I worked for Queensland Transport as a HR advisor and trainer. I went on then to work for Super Retail Group, Super Cheap Auto, BCF, Gold Cross Cycles, Raise Outdoors. I looked after the training for it was about 10,000 people back then. And wow. um, and then, re- but I always still really knew I wanted my own business, and so I was fortunate enough to. I start when I was working for them. I got to a point where I was like, okay, I'm gonna, and I just started coaching people. I co- I was a career counselor actually. I'm still accredited as a career counselor. I don't tell anyone that. You might have to edit that bit, Alan. <laughs> I'm, joking. I'm, joking. I'm not gonna create work. Um, but um, but that was how I started because I was uh, I loved helping people to be able to get jobs and the type of work that I wanted to do and I started that back in the GFC um, and but I started coaching on like Monday nights Tuesday uh, Thursday nights and Saturday mornings and I just sort of built it up to a point where I was doing some consulting um, contracting work so I worked for the lar- world's largest productivity company. Um, as a contractor, I was doing some of my stuff. Um, I was a bit of a jack of all trades doing whatever I could to get to a point where I could leave my job. And it wasn't that I hated my job. I had a really great job and it was a dream job, but I just knew I had a higher purpose and more that I wanted to bring. Hello, amazing human. This is just a quick brief message to remind you to share the love. And what do I mean by sharing the love? What I mean is if you know someone who might get value from this episode or from this interview, make sure you share this episode with them. Also, if you are enjoying this interview and may enjoy other interviews like it, make sure you hit the subscribe button or follow button on whichever platform you're listening or watching on. And lastly, if you're really enjoying this episode, if you really want to share the love, make sure you leave a rating. A positive rating with lots of love is much appreciated. Otherwise, let's get back to the show. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. So obviously, there's a wide, vast experience that like, you know, you've gotten to see a lot of different things and, and you know, go down a lot of different rabbit holes and things like that. But I, I actually really like what you said at the very start, even before, like, as we started to open up the interview, you're like, um, I work with people 
and you made the analogy of like taking, you know, I open, I'm a can opener. And yes. do you want to just tell me more about what that, what that I, means yeah, yeah. to you? Yeah. I always think uh, people come to me with, um, uh, and this is right back from the days when I was helping people market themselves. I used to do write resumes and LinkedIn profiles and all that sort of stuff. And people got all this amazing, great stuff inside them. And it's like, um, it's like having a jar or a bottle and, you know, there's nothing written on the label. It's all in the jar and we've got to get it all out. So, you know, I think about, um, you know, sometimes people, uh, I'm working with someone recently who uh, she's been a really successful business owner, has now sold her business in the past and now wants to go out and do work with helping people to achieve their potential, resilience, all that sort of thing. And um, she, uh, really credible, but once you get inside that jar and into the story or into the can, I say in the can opener, is I get in and go, oh, and what, what happened there? And, you know, how did you do that? And then you go through, I really go through a lot of people's life story. I listen to a lot of life stories, which I really enjoy, and pull all the pieces together to work out, well, what's the label we've got to put on the front? Because we can't sell a secret. It can't sit inside. We've got to put it... And we've got to um, package it up and get it out there so that people can look at that label and go, oh, wow, okay, now I get what you do. I need your help, please. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love the analogy and even the way that you've explained it. And my next question is, this is this is a little bit of a, like something that I constantly talk about. So you, you obviously work with, um, you know, world-class consultants, I think yes. you said, is the yes. is the way that you explained it. Now, obviously, these people, these consultants and coaches and, and different, you know, people of different industries, I'm really curious to know more about, like, obviously, some of the things that you talked about is their personal story, how it sort of fits into a business and, and things like that. Because sometimes, especially talking about branding, there's this line of, like, what is, like, obviously, where do you have a personal brand? Where do you have a business brand? Um, and where do you draw the line? And is oh. there one better than the other and everything else as well? So I'd what love to question. open up that can and hear your yeah. thoughts on it as well. <laughs> oh, what a great question. Well, I think about when it comes to helping people build um, a world-class brand, they typically have had 20 years experience. Plus, usually about most who I work with have had, spent 20 years in corporate or 20 years doing something that has got them some kind of income or stability. So they've either had a business or they've been in corporate. They've been a, um, uh, a risk manager. They've been a marketing manager. They've been some, a CEO. They've been, you know, whatever it might be. Um, and um, so we go, great. People understand the technical skills that you bring and that someone has had that problem that they've needed your help. So let's say, for example, they've been a head of, um, uh, they've been a CFO, for example. So let's think about, a good example is someone who I mentor, she won't mind me saying her name's Alana Bennett. So she's got a fantastic business. So she coaches CFOs. Her background was as a CFO. She's worked a lot in the finance sector. And so, yeah, there's CFOs that need her help. Um, uh, the difference that she brings and her uniqueness is that she's lived in Australia. She has family that are... Um, uh, in Tonga, so she grew up, she was born in Tonga, moved to Australia, and then she moved to America, she lived over there. But what makes her really unique in the lens that she, she's really warm, she's funny, she has done the depth of thinking like no one else around being a CFO. She has, uh, she mentors a group of CFOs, but she markets herself under elenabennett.com. So you've got the personal brand, but she's got this technical skill. But why people come to her is because she's really good at reading trends. She's really good at seeing the future of what it means to be a CFO in the future. And she's very purpose driven and helps them to find meaning, purpose and connection in their work. So while she might go, oh, well, I need someone who could help me to be a good CFO. Yeah, you could, there's courses, you could do all sorts of things in that. But she taps really into that um, sort of essence and that heart and soul of who you are as a human being so you can bring that best version of yourself and she does that with such beauty and grace and um, and the depth of thinking she's written a couple written she's writing a third book at the moment um, and also the other thing too is that 
when you're um, and she's not you know a lot of people maybe haven't heard of her because she's like she's not a look at me I'm all over Instagram I'm all over Facebook um, she's very customer centric she works with a real tight group of people but um, they go to her for that sense of purpose um, connection higher sense of um, achievement in what they want to achieve but she really cares she doesn't she's not focused on how much attention she's getting they know that they come to her because she really cares and looks after them so to answer your question I think you go yeah like other people I could get a mentor or a coach for CFO and help me be, be good at the technical skills and the business side of it but who do I want to be as a human being who am I trying to become um, and in Eleanor's case she moved out of Sydney, she moved to the Central Coast, she's created the whole life by design of, of, and she's living the dream. And so then they go, well, who are you? And I think when you're building a personal brand, I often say it's a little bit like you're marketing yourself when people say, I want to be Alan Howe when I grow up. I want to be yeah. Alan Bennett when I grow up. I just yeah. love who they are. I love everything they have to say. I listen to every podcast. I read every book. I watch all the videos. I listen to... I watch his social media. So when you're marketing your personal brand, a business brand is a little bit commoditized. It's hard to make it even more unique, but there's only mm -hmm. one Alan Howe. There's only one Alan Bennett. There's only one me. And you know what? That means some people won't like you too. Sure, yep. fair enough. Like we're not trying to be to everybody, but it does mean that your essence, your uniqueness is what sets you apart. I love that. I love that. And look, what what you just should have shared is is something that I constantly talk about with. Um, so I typically work with a lot of people in property and real estate, um, yes. and obviously do we create video content. Uh, and one of the co most common, you know, conversations I'm having is especially like a, typically a lot of people who are just starting out or maybe in their first two years of business you know, um, you know, moving in a new direction are still really unsure about like, how much do I put myself out there? How much of my story, yeah. like, do people even care? And, and I like my immediate reaction is absolutely people care. Yes. It's what separates you from everyone else. Yes. And I think the more like what I really liked about your analogy about, you know, cracking the can open and, and whatnot is really just about being comfortable what, with what's in the can, you know, yes. your flaws, your mistakes, your journey, you know, trials and tribulations, it's all formed your education, if you will, your degree in life that has <laughs> now brought you to where you are. Is there anything you want to add on that? Yeah, like it, it, it's, uh, you make a great comment in that it can feel like it's all just the, um, the rosy stuff that people kind of want to see, but they don't. They want to know you're real. They want to know you've been through the pain that they are experiencing. And, you know, you go, and you're a great example of this. You talk so much around mental health. You talk about so much of that. And I know people are going through so many challenges and they just feel like, you know what? I think this person would get me. If I would talk to them, I feel like that, that they're in service to me. People want to feel like they matter, that they connect and they belong. And if we can't, if we're so busy going, oh, I'm such a rock star. Look how amazing I am. <laughs> um, they're going, oh, good for you. Yeah. Um, you know, and there's an, I mean, there's an aspect of people who go, yeah, I kind of want to be that person when I grow up. But I want to know that that person, it's the whole lived experience. It's that you've trod the path that I'm treading and I need to know that this is going to get better. And I know, need to know that you can help me get there and possibly faster than you and I got there. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I love that. I love that. And so, yeah, one of the things we, we always, like I seem to constantly talk about is this, this element of like really bringing people, you know, and their, their story out and, and things like that. Um, because... I think in as, as well, especially like I'm going to specifically talk about business owners right now um, yeah. because typically when, you know, a business owner looks at doing something for their marketing, their PR, their brand in general, they're always yeah. thinking in the back of their mind, okay, if I'm going to work with someone or I'm going to put some money down, I need to see some sort of ROI, right? Yeah. And that's, that's one of the most common things. But I think especially with some of the marketing that we're talking about, you know, 
we're not talking about sharing a story, you know, for, you know, knowing that or, you know, even with the incentive of I'm going to make this money back in any way, shape or form. But it's just, it's the same as like, you know, giving your mum a call every, you know, every so often, just checking in and making sure she's okay and things like that. And why do you do it? Because you care. And yes. it's it's for a reason above and beyond, like my mum's not paying me any money. My mum, like, you know, my yes. mum... You know, I care about this person. My mum, you know, raised me and and all those other things. And this is where I'd love to understand your take on, because obviously a lot of branding, a lot of, you, you probably have this conversation all the time. And I'd yeah. love to know how you address it when it comes to like people who want to see that correlation of, I put X amount down to get this back. What, like, what are your thoughts or feedback anyway? This is why I love what you do, Alan. So when people come to me, so I, a bit of context, I spent seven years in Thought Leaders Business School and I was on faculty in there for that time and worked under a gentleman called Matt Church. For those who have come across Matt, some of your listeners will probably have. Um, so I have great admiration for Matt and he changed a lot of, it changed my life in terms of things that I was doing. Um, but Matt one day shared, uh, so something that they teach in Thought Leaders Business School and that I teach my clients is how to unpack their thought leadership. And we're looking for not just um, how much un unpacking you can do, but what is the return on investment of every single piece of that IP that's unpacked. Each single piece of that IP could be used in a blog, a chapter in a book, a coaching program, a podcast, a video. Um, and so there's the elements of, yes, there's the social elements and where video can go in. And it is like you say, it's a bit like calling your mum. And I know Gary V sort of talks in that space too. I think a little bit differently. I think that if I go, okay, that piece of IP, and this is why you do what you do and why I run content creation boot camps, is because I go, we can leverage a single piece of IP to the max. So in other words, think once, use often. So the process that I learned and how I've written 11 books, and that's how I teach for people who really want to go, I'll go, you want to come? I'll teach you how to do it if you really want to know. Um, and um, But what I've learned is that every, uh, and Matt shared one day, and I'm sure he won't mind me saying this, this is one day in, in Thought Leaders they shared um, how many pieces of IP generated a return for the participants that are in the program one day. And they identified that a single piece of IP, a single piece of thought leadership, which is the process they teach, generated on average about $10,000 to a business. So if it's used, it can, you know, that can generate that kind of return. So if you go, like for example, so if I wrote, so I wrote Expert to Influencer back in 2017, and every chapter in that book is a piece of IP. There also happens to be a podcast, a blog, a video. So that's why I love what you do, Alan, because you can go, I'm going to do two days with Alan and I'm just going to get Alan or his team to film this for me. But that can be used in so many other ways. Um, and, you know, I've had that book for, I've got that program I've put oh, a few, quite a lot of people through it. I've put 3,000 people through the diagnostic. Um, uh, I have got licensees who use this program with their own clients. Um, so it's generated a lot more than $10,000 per piece um, over that time. So there's, I agree with you, there's the nurturing and the love and the care to be able to show that you're interested in your customers and clients. But from an ROI perspective, when I run the content creation boot camps, I calculate how many pieces of IP is created based on a return of $10,000 and that's generally being conservative. So if they do, we work off say 50, you know that's half a million dollars worth of IP that's created in two days. Yeah. And that's totally that's possible. Absolutely. Long way to answer it. <laughs> no, that, but I love it. It's a, it like, that's what this, this platform's for is long, you know, articulated really well, like really well thought out answers and I love it. and. Yeah, because I think even what you're talking about, you know, um, those different pieces, especially well, especially videos and, and all, yes. you know, a few of the other things that you're talking about, 
these are like pieces that are you know pretty much going to be on your socials forever especially when you think about youtube as a search platform like it you know especially like more so for your, your um, social media yeah. platforms like your videos will potentially get seen in a very short period of time unless you yes. put some more ad spend or whatever the case is um, but on a platform like youtube and other platforms like that your videos can be seen multiple times and reused multiple times yeah. and then it's really funny like there's literally like literally before i hopped on there was a lady who um found me through one of like another podcast uh there was someone talking about like what we do a client of mine what? talking about what we do she's literally come over she's liked i'm not joking about 15 of my videos started wow. a conversation and all these other things but like those pieces like they're just forever they're forever living and someone's like comment can re-engage you know a video and now more people are seeing it and all those other things as well so i love yes. what i sort of took from what you shared is is more so the long-term piece as well it's like you know there's time there's obviously we want to you know work and and create some sort of return immediately but also have that long span of time as Absolutely. well as well um yes. Something that we talked about that like there's a little quote that I, I picked up from one of our previous interviews and this was specifically about speaking. Um, so I think we had a conversation about, you know, talking on stages and things like that. You know, like I obviously mentioned the Eric stage, the real estate conference, Eric. Um, one of probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest one in Australia for real estate anyway. Um, and so like obviously you know from from a perspective of you know you know there's lots of people in marketing lots of people in branding and and different things like that your experience and your wisdom and what you've been doing has built up to that but what i want to do is i actually want to quote i i haven't written the quote down but i want to get your perspective on something you said and it was that it was around the idea of like it was around the idea of if you want to be seen on stages, you need to get yourself on more stages or so, something along those lines. Do you know yeah. what I'm referring to? I do. It was speaking creates speaking. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, it. And would love to hear like the like your analogy as to like if someone's looking to speak on more stages with that analogy, let's unpack that. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. So um, I think what I find when it comes to speaking to speaking is, um, you know, sometimes people will say, oh, I want to, I, um, you know, I want to speak at Ari. I want to speak at Ari. I want to speak at, you know, these stages. And you go, yeah, yeah, like that's all good. Very hard to get on that kind of stage. And you're not necessarily going to be your first stage. But what creates speaking is speaking. So every time you speak, you'll know you're doing a, a pretty good job if you get about, you might get, two or three more speaking gigs off the back of that gig. So in other words, they see you speak and they go, oh my God, where have you been my whole life? You need to come and speak to my group, come and speak to my team, or I am, I'm part of this other community, I'm in the Chamber of Commerce, or I'm in um, this local city council community, or you know, we have a conference every year, you know, I need to, we need to talk to you about that. So, um, and you build up to that, you know, so I remember when I first started speaking, um, uh, you know, I spoke in nursing homes, I spoke in a school, um, I spoke, uh, you know, I, I spoke in places where you might think, oh, well, you know, they're never going to book you again. But what I did was cut my teeth. I cut my teeth on my content. Um, I learned how to engage really difficult people. School kids are the worst. Um, <laughs> and, I mean, not worst as in toughest. They're yes. definitely toughest, hardest yeah. to impress, my God, but good training ground. Um, and, um, but I remember, you know, I did a, a speaking gig for a group of, um, uh, there was an, uh, like a nursing home, these older women, and it was such good practice. They were all in their eighties and I had to talk to them about personal brand. They were knitting. They were, <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, this is a lesson in knowing your audience. Um, and I had to change my content, but it was good practice to go, how do you build, how do you talk about personal branding and inspire 80 year olds, you know, who are towards you know, the latter part of their life. It was all about buying, finding meaning and purpose. And I was like, oh gosh, I've got to get these people up out of bed every day. Um, <laughs> but speaking yeah. creates speaking because off the back of that, someone saw me present 
and they said, could you come and speak? We've got this women's leadership group because I think that's what they need. And then off the back of that, that created that. So, you know, sometimes when you, if you're wanting to build a speaking business, I spoke to, I spoke, I reckon I spoke at probably about 70 events before I got paid. And now I only do paid speaking events. I don't do that, that many, um, uh, but I was doing a lot. I was doing at least one a week. And, but it was, you know, building up over time. I remember Darren Hill, who runs a pro, runs a company called Pragmatic Thinking. It's in, um, it's been in the BRW Fast 100, um, and he talks about. Um, he, I remember one night he spoke at a professional speakers association event here in in Brisbane, and he said, sometimes as speakers we we aim to get on a, a, a big or a good stage, sometimes a bit early. And he said, I think what you're better off to do is get really good and then aim for that stage it, you, it, that stage will eventually come to you um, you can still reach out but you need collateral you need to show that you've got testimonials you need to show that you're serious if you're a world class speaker we need speaker kit, show reel um, we need all those things so that we can see but you, they're not going to happen overnight, you've got to start somewhere and just start speaking even if it's you know, speak to you. I started. I practiced on Winston. Like, <laughs> practiced, practiced with your dog, but um, you know, I think it can be. Oh, but I want the. You know, I, I, RX the perfect place for me. I wouldn't have thought I'd got RX. You know, RX certainly one of the most prestigious stages in Australia, um, and um, not many speakers have can say they've spoken at RX. But that was, you know, uh, what have we done? Probably three, four hundred gigs before I got it. Yeah. So. You know, there's a lot of um, speaking great speaking, though. If you want to speak, speak. <laughs> Absolutely. I love that. And it's and it's... video as well. Like for you, Alan, like I say to people, I remember I was coaching a professional speaker one year. And sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. That's okay. No, um, no, go. I remember I was coaching. He was doing really good revenue in his speaking at the time, but he wanted to quadruple it. And in his social posts, um, everything was... Um, all his social posts were about what he, it was like he was a food critic. I said, all the food that's in your photos in your social media, I said, it looks like you're either a chef, a food critic, um, because it was everything that he ate for lunch or for dinner. Like I said, I totally get that you eat food, that you eat food and that you like food. Um, the problem is there's no footage of you speaking in your social media. Yeah. If you want to talk, talk. Like, um, and that means pieces to camera, it doesn't have to be footage of you speaking on a stage at a conference because you might not always get that. But, you know, pull up your phone, get your <laughs> little thing out, Tripod, put yourself yeah. up and talk. Yep. Um, Absolutely. So I find for most people, the, the, the first thing they'll say is I want to speak more and I go, socials, there's no, t t you're not talking. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I love that. And look, I, one of the things, so I'm working, I mentioned I'm working with... Um, someone to help my own PR at the moment. And yeah. one of the things she said to me um, and helped me to understand is obviously, you know, off the back of sharing and talking and whatnot, not only do you find your own voice, but you leverage, you know, different opportunities. So like um, even, even the example you're using, like, you know, um, the example of like speaking at a nursing home, speaking at a school, speaking, you know, there's different people, different situations, circumstances, you never know who knows who, um, but you're leveraging off, you know, and like I really liked cutting your teeth and, and really finding your voice, finding your and learning the craft, really, and yeah. um, showing that you're dead serious about making this um, a part of your future and, and, and what your caliber of what you, you do as well. I love that. Yeah, I even remember speaking at a conference in New Zealand. And by the way, I wasn't paid, but I knew it was a really good gig. And I put my hand up. I paid for my flights, paid for my accommodation. Now, what I didn't know was Tony Robbins' promoter was in the audience. And he came up to me at the end and he said, uh, I loved everything you spoke about. So this is back in about 2018. Um, so he was based in Singapore and looked after some of the Central European stuff for Tony Robbins. And he said... Um, First question is, will you speak in Russia? And I was like, um, is that legal? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and then he said, um, have you got, if you were on a stage in front of 10,000 people, have you got a leveraged way to work with them um, if I put you on that stage? And 
um, I realized I hadn't built my online course that day, and I, but I, I was like, but I can build that in the hotel room tonight. So I was like, yes, 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 I do. Um, now, COVID hit and all the things changed and that didn't eventuate. But it just goes to show, you know, I didn't know he was going to be in the audience. I, you know, I could easily go, oh, well, and I'm not saying that you have to go and fork out a fortune to go and get on these stages, but if you're really serious and you're prepared to have a crack and put yourself out there and it's all just um, practice. But, you know, you see these opportunities, get on a plane, <laughs> um, speak, you know, but I was, I was very determined and very serious. It wasn't like, oh, I'm only going to speak at things in Brisbane. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Even just to add on what you shared, like I mentioned, um, you know, like be, before we started the call, like I, I had someone reach out to me and it was off the back of some things that I'd written. Um, at the time, I wasn't ready to share more into like, you know, my own story and, and things like that. I had different focuses at the time. Right. Um, but yeah, that's, it's, all off, it's all been off the back of momentum and something that I've yeah. put out. And, you yeah. know, regardless of whether, like, I'm not, I'm not someone who foresees myself speaking on large stages at this stage of my life anyway. And maybe that will change in the future and, and things like that. But it's something that, like, if I can share, right? So yeah. the, the, the post that I did, and you may recall this one, is I wrote a post is roughly about two years ago and it's a time I called Lifeline. Yeah. And at the time, I it was just tough. Like, we had um, restrictions, yeah. uh, like state restrictions. Um, there was a lot of confusion. And my business was struggling. Um, as a main breadwinner and everything else in between, having two kids and, and whatnot, I was just mentally in a really, 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 really dark place and mm. um, started like sort of like for me, I started slipping into a place that um, I knew I couldn't, I knew I wasn't going to come back. And I knew like I was conscious enough to know, okay, I need to like, this can't happen. I can't go down this path. Anyway, so I called Lifeline. Um, I remember the exact place and I remember the conversation. Um, and the moment that I did, like I, like the the call itself was really like it was a really good opportunity i cried i like had a big release and mm. felt so good after it that i knew that i was like i know and i've had conversations with people who were almost in the exact same situation and circumstance for that reason not not for attention not for business not for anything i wrote a post as to why i called lifeline later that day yes. and what happened was four or five people reached out who like I got a lot of support and I think you actually reached out as well Jane and just said like if you need to talk let me know um, mm -hmm. but there was a lot there was four to five men who reached out and just said thank you so much for like just saying it like yeah. some and I think when I read between the lines it's like sometimes you just don't know um, yeah. what's not spoken and what's not That's talked right. about and all those other things. Yes. And that like, and so when we talk about PR and all these other things, the reason that someone reached out was because of reading that, then, you know, going through some of my socials and, and seeing some of the stuff. And now I've started to look into it a little bit further and all these other things. Um, but none of that would have happened unless I'd put, you know, just express and share and show and and all those other things and um as i mentioned i don't have any aspirations to be on a stage or talk or you know anything like that um per se it's definitely something that i'd be open to if it came up um mm. so i'm just sort of playing and seeing how it goes my focus is my business at the moment anyway um yes. but yeah like i think it's a it's it's a really good opportunity when you come from a place of like just wanting to do the right thing or being passionate right. about something and sharing it or even, you know, you, you, you have a talent or you're funny or whatever the case is and, and you share that talent or whatever, that gift to, yes. with other people, slowly and surely it will get picked up and it's really just about tying into like being more authentic. Yeah, and in service, you know, I think uh, sometimes we can think, oh, I hate being centre of attention and... You know, I'm, I'm not good at standing up in front of a crowd or, you know, it, even, um, and that was a huge thing, Alan, that you did at that time because 
so many it was at a time when it was so confusing for everybody and I can imagine the people that reached out said thank you for saying that because you know there where uh, I love what Seth Godin says where he says you know we're waiting for you to lead us and that's what we're waiting for we're waiting someone to take the lead show us what we have to do and when you're speaking if you're building a practice and, and this is anybody who has a business you don't even have to be a professional speaker um but i'm not naturally a great speaker i've just learned how to do it i have had stagecraft coaches storytelling coaches voice coaches um you know i i didn't wake up with this gift um i'm i'm naturally i'm a coach i love to be behind the scenes i don't like being on cameras but i do it because i bloody have to um but <laughs> And not just that, but because, you know, you're, I think we've cut from the same cloth, Alan, in that we we are here to help and we're here to serve. And if yeah. you come from that place, um, it's about intent over content. Like if you, Absolutely. if it's over, if it's, if how you're showing up is, you know what, you're not perfect. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter if you are an R and, you know, how you speak. But if you're there and you have the intention of helping people, that's and and I remember some of the first events I did, even if they weren't, they were some of my own because I couldn't get any gigs. So you know, um, but what I did was I just invited five people to dinner, and I was like, I'm going to just share, and I shared at a table. I wasn't on a stage or anything. So you know, we all have the ability. If if it um, these things come to you, if it, if it's clear that you're there to serve, when it's all about look at me, I'm on a stage. Yeah, you know, that's not gonna that's not gonna grow your business. But if you're coming with intent to serve and help, and um, and which is what you did, Alan, you're like, this isn't perfect, but I maybe this might help someone else. You know, then that's what comes comes back because people are thinking these things, but they're not saying it. Mm. I love that. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for all of that. Is there anything else like I? Before we do wrap up, is there anything else that we've talked about or anything you'd like to finish on at all? Oh, I'd just say, you know, for those, if you're listening, you know, um, Alan, you know, you've just really trod the path for, uh, I think I remember back when we connected on LinkedIn and I remember thinking, oh, fantastic, someone gets this um, because of the work we've done around helping people unpack their thinking. I, I'm not an expert in videography, so I wasn't going you know, to film people, but that's, you know, it's the fact you, I remember you reached out to me. I remember because okay. I went, oh, yeah. hallelujah. He gets it. <laughs> so I was, then I, that's why I got you on my show. Cause I was like, oh, everyone who's been going to the content we had, we've had, you know, over 600 people attend our content creation boot camps. So to be able to say, here's Alan, um, you know, I would really, for those who are listening, you know, you've got more in than you, than you might think. And you've got incredible ideas and thought leadership and, um, ways that you can share your thinking and help people um, you know if you've got Alan in your corner uh, go for it because you know what everybody else is too scared and if you can do it with someone who's in your corner who's as kind and as generous and helpful as Alan's uh, as you Alan and your team you know why not I just think that's you're doing an incredible job and keep keep going <laughs> yeah yeah. Well, thank you. Now my head's not going to fit through the door as I walk out, but thank you anyway. Thank you. Um, so, well, if people are interested in finding out more about you, Jane, or even, you know, yeah. grabbing one of your books or whatever, where's the best place to find you? Yeah, you can jump on the website's jane-anderson.com. Um, I'm on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and all those things as well. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure and uh, would love to catch up again sometime in the future as well. Sounds great. Thanks, awesome. Alan. Thank you. That is the end of today's podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, as I mentioned before, make sure you share the love, share it with a friend, family member, or otherwise, make sure to give us a subscribe or even a positive rating on the various platforms. And if you're interested in finding out more about Triple Effect and who we are, what we do, head to tripleeffect.com.au. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next interview.